Hey everyone, thanks a lot for tuning in for another episode of my TIG Welding How-To Series, TIG Welding for Beginners. Today I'm going to show you my top five TIG welding mistakes that I see. Okay, so the number one most common TIG welding mistake that I see when people are beginning is welding with a contaminated tungsten electrode. <laughs> Your tungsten can get contaminated in a few different ways, but let's look at the most common way. The most common way that someone contaminates their tungsten is by touching their tungsten to their workpiece. May not seem like much, but all it takes is a little touch of your tungsten on your workpiece and your electrode has picked up material and it's stuck to the tungsten electrode. Some people try and burn it off on a piece of scrap. This does work and maybe if you're just beginning to start learning how to TIG weld, doing this here and there might be okay. But what's going to start to happen is the more times you dip it, your arc is going to tend to wander back and forth. Even though you may be holding the torch completely perfectly, your arc is going to start dancing back and forth. So probably if you dip your tungsten, I usually always keep four to five clean tungstens next to me. If you dip it, just swap it out for a new one. Do yourself a favor. What I'll do is I'll, if I dip it, I will take it out immediately, put a new one in. I'll put the dirty ones aside. I'll go outside to our uh, belt sander and I'll clean them all at once. Make it a lot easier for myself. Another way that it gets contaminated, this one's a lot worse, is when people touch their filler rod to their tungsten electrode, that thing is toast. There isn't much you can do to burn a whole lot of that off. The thing's gonna be destroyed. If you do that, just suck it up, <laughs> grab a new tungsten, go clean that guy off later. It'll make things a lot easier for you, trust me. As you can see in this clip here, I'm doing a little TIG welding demo with an absolutely destroyed tungsten. <laughs> As you can see, when it's arced up, the arc is completely erratic. There's stuff flying off of it. You've got black smoke. When you finish your weld, you might see a bit of a clean strip where you actually have ran your puddle along the material. But overall, look at the black soot and all the stuff that's surrounding that clean puddle. If there's any hint of anything black or smoky around a finished weld, you've just done a weld with a contaminated tungsten. So again, please change your tungsten. <laughs> Don't even bother trying to do a weld, especially if you're learning. It'll make it a lot easier for yourself. As you can see in this clip here, I've got a couple tungstens. These guys actually have just been dipped super quickly, actually pretty harmlessly it might look like. But if you look at the tungstens, you can see a little band of contamination that's collected in a couple spots around the tungstens. You might see some contamination right around the ball near the end. You might see some contamination about a centimeter up that's collected just around the cup line. It may not seem like much, but again, this will mess your weld up. It will either cause weld to be contaminated by material that's sparking off your electrode, or it's gonna cause your arc to wander all over the place. And if you're learning, you're really trying to keep a steady arc going, this thing's gonna be wandering all over the place. It's gonna drive you crazy and make things frustrating. So I urge you, if you dip your tungsten or you contaminate it in any way, just switch it up. Do yourself a favor, get a few stacked up, ready to go. And if you dip, no big deal, just swap it out for a new one. Okay, TIG welding mistake number two I see most commonly, improper post flow. So what this means is that when you finish a weld, you may arc off, but your torch still has a job to do. There's something on your machine called post flow. And what you do is you set your post flow so that when you extinguish your arc and finish your weld, your gas should still be flowing because what's happening is your tungsten is still going to be glowing red hot. As long as your tungsten is glowing red hot, it needs to be covered with gas. What happens sometimes is that people very commonly set up their machine so that their post flow does not run long enough. So when they finish a weld, what will happen is the tungsten will still be glowing, the gas will be running for a second or two, and then the gas will shut off. And you can see in this clip, as the gas shuts off, there's a little puff that occurs on the end of the tungsten. Even just a slight discoloration. When you finish a weld, your tungsten should be shiny and clean. If you finish a weld and it looks at all chalky, dark, gray, 
even sometimes green, depends what's going on with what you're doing, it should be shiny. If it's not shiny, what's happened is contamination has now completely coated your tungsten. So what's gonna happen is when you start your next weld, bam, all that contamination is gonna be blown into the start of your next weld. So again, what you need to do is adjust the pulse flow on your machine to stay running until your tungsten has completely stopped glowing red hot. If you finished and you see your tungsten is nice and shiny, you've got it tuned perfectly. Again, you'll have to adjust your pulse flow for longer or shorter times depending on how many amps you're working with. If you're doing a weld that's about 160, 150 amps, you won't need as much pulse flow. If you're welding at something 240-ish, 250, something crazy hot, you're gonna need to crank it up so it stays on a little bit longer after you finish welding. Another big mistake that happens when people finish welding, as far as post flow goes, is they'll finish welding and they'll be so excited to see the dope weld that they just did, that they flip up their mask and move their torch to the side like this. What you've just done is when you move your torch to the side, you've taken it out of the argon cloud that's coming out of your torch. So you're waving it into clean air away from argon and boom, the same thing is gonna happen. You're gonna have a cloud of contamination that's gonna be coating your tungsten immediately. And again, same thing. Even though you haven't dipped or anything like that, you may even have your post flow set really, really well. But if you finish a weld and you move your torch aside to see the weld that you've just done, you're gonna contaminate your tungsten. So be sure, when you finish a weld, just keep your torch next to you. Flip up your mask, wait for the tungsten to stop blowing, then you can move it out of the way. Okay, number three. This one's pretty common, especially when people first start learning how to TIG weld. Bad sight lines. What I mean by this is that when people get set up to do a weld, they'll get super comfortable, get ready to arc on, arc on, they start welding, and then before they know it, their hand is in front of their face. And they may have their feeding hand in front of their face, or they may be sitting at an angle where they're actually welding away from their point of vision. What you need to do is make sure that when you get ready, before you arc up, you're gonna be traveling the amount of space you need to without any of your hands or anything getting in your way. It's really important. That one's pretty simple. Just make sure you're comfortable, make sure you're gonna be able to see the whole way and you should be fine. Number four, this one's pretty common too. This one I can always chalk up to standoff technique. What I mean by standoff technique, standoff is the distance between the tip of your tungsten and your workpiece. There's a couple different ways people can get this wrong. A pretty common one when you first get started TIG welding, because you're gonna be afraid of dipping, you're gonna run a greater standoff distance where your tungsten is further away from your material. The reason that this is bad is your arc is actually gonna be blown really wide by doing this. The further up your electrode is from your workpiece, the wider your arc cone is gonna be. The closer it is to it, the narrower your arc cone is gonna be. So what happens when it's too far away is it's immediately susceptible to contamination. So without even dipping or anything bad like that happening, your puddle is gonna be contaminated and oxidized right away. You're gonna get a really bad weld. It's not gonna look nice. So basically you need to make sure that you're not too far away with your standoff distance. A lot of people also tend to get too close with their standoff distance. Now, if I had to pick between the two, I would prefer to be too close than too far away because too close, you are gonna get a clean weld, but the downside about this is that you run the risk of dipping your tungsten. Obviously, we went over that already. Dipping your tungsten means trashing your tungsten. So just avoid getting too close. Another reason why having it too close isn't a good thing is when your tungsten is too close to your workpiece, you can't get a proper filler rod angle. Now, if you guys watched my other videos on how to TIG weld for beginners, I'll refresh your memory. The angle that your tungsten is at should be roughly 90 degrees to the angle that your filler rod is at. So if you're welding at a travel angle where you're about 45 or so, your filler rod angle is gonna be opposite 45 so that this should be 90 degrees. So no matter what, angle you're welding at, it'll always be 90 degrees to your tungsten. So that's why you need to make sure you have a proper standoff distance. Number five, and this one should make the most sense to people, 
is people trying to weld joints that are too difficult for their skill level. I don't mean to rain on your parade. It's cool that you're trying to be ambitious and do cool joints, but if you haven't learned the joints that come before the tricky ones, they're gonna be garbage. So what I recommend is I've laid out a few welds in my how-to series. I started with what I really think is the easiest one, the lap joint TIG weld. The lap joint TIG weld is the easiest one to see. You're not gonna burn through. Think of it like this. Frank, down here, please. When you're learning TIG welding, you need to make sure that you get the simple joints down first. And I don't mean just doing them once, looking at it being like, yep, looks good enough, on to the next one. I mean picking the simplest one, doing it a hundred times or more and getting it absolutely perfect. If I could go back in time to when I was learning how to TIG weld, I would actually teach myself to weld perfectly a hundred times and then switch hands and do it perfectly another hundred times. This is gonna teach you everything you need when you go to the next joint. And I really, really know it'll make it easier for yourself if you learn the first steps properly and perfect every single time. So if you're trying a weld and it's not going well, and you've never done this weld before and you can't understand why it doesn't look like the pictures on Instagram or it doesn't look like the video that you're watching on YouTube, I really encourage you just to take a step back and try an easier joint, maybe one that you know you've done a hundred times and you can do really well. It'll reset you, it'll get you calmed down and it might help you out when you go to move on to that trickier stuff later. But basically, don't set yourself up for failure. Make sure you learn the easy stuff first and do it perfectly every time before you jump onto the harder stuff. All right, so you guys, that's the top five things that when I'm training someone how to TIG weld, I most commonly see. Obviously, if you talk to different TIG welders or if other TIG welders are watching this and those people are saying, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. These are just the things I see. I'm not saying I know everything about how to train people, but from when I've trained people, which is a lot, this is the most common five things I see. So have a run through the five. If you have any questions or problems coming up, hit me up on either Instagram, it's at Pacific Arc TIG Welding, or join my Facebook group page, it's Pacific Arc TIG Welding. You can post there, you can post any stuff you'd like, you can ask me questions, hit me up, I'll help you out as much as I can. All right, you guys, I really appreciate you watching these videos. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe, like, share, do all that stuff. I feel bad asking, but it helps the channel grow. The more people that watch these channels, the more videos I'll make. So again, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Have fun welding.